Joe from Ojo here. Today I want to talk to you about the economics of pod coffee. Um, quite often one of the questions uh, or maybe remarks I will get from somebody who's just looking at the possibility of getting specialty coffee in their house is that, oh, it's too expensive. I just throw my K-cup in and I'm good to go. Um, but in reality, if you did some math and some research, you'll realize that you're overpaying for coffee that has been pre-ground who knows when, roasted who knows when, sourced from who knows where, and, uh, and then finally brewed in who knows what. So for example, I'm just gonna take a couple of these popular pods that are on the market. And um, first one, you can find one of these at any grocery store. Um, doing some online research, uh, Costco probably has the best deal on these things, like 96 of these cups for something like $56.99. Pretty incredible deal on the onset. A um, couple things, um, is the plastic recyclable? Is it compostable? What are the chemicals in that plastic? We won't know the answers to these questions. The other important thing for me is when was this stuff roasted? Nobody knows, it comes pre-ground. And one thing to realize with pre-ground coffee is as soon as you grind coffee, it starts to oxidize. All those beautiful aromas and oils start to disintegrate at the moment you grind them. So if it's been sitting in here for who knows how long, are you getting fresh coffee? I don't know, you'll have to make that judgment call. But, so this particular pod here, um, weighed out about nine grams of coffee. And at $56, uh, 96 pods, that works out that this little cup ended up costing you 59 cents, and uh, or around anywhere between 55 and 59 cents. You might think, oh, that's cheaper than going out through the drive-through. However, when you break it down to how many grams you're actually getting in that pod, and if you actually do uh, a brew recipe where you're using 18 grams of coffee, which is where we like most of our cups to be, uh, you end up spending $1.17 to make that same cup of coffee when comparing it to Ojo coffee. When you translate that back up to one pound of coffee, you are paying $29 a pound for pre-ground, pre-roasted, plastic packaged, untraceable coffee. And that's the cheapest deal on the market. Hmm. Let me take another uh, particular uh, pod that you may find, uh, upscale. Uh, the pod comes in, in an aluminum, um, different kinds of aluminum. Uh, does it leach? I don't know. Is it food safe? Probably according to uh, CFIA, um, but who knows. Now this, if it's turfed in the landfill, will not break down. Um, there is a recycling program, and if you read the fine print on the recycling program, it says that uh, they will attempt to recycle all pods. So it's a commitment to a maybe. Anyway, we weigh this one out, and we end up getting five grams in this little pod. So when you translate five gr uh, grams of coffee, they come in a, um, a 10 pack, and this was kind of like their mid-line um, offer. Uh, I think it was about $7.99 for this package. Um, over five grams. It ends up uh, costing $7.99, Ted bought 79 cents per pod. Um, when I break that down into making an 18 gram cup, it then drives my cost up to $2.87. When I take that same coffee and make it into one pound, it turns out to be a whopping $72.54 per pound for pre-ground, pre-roasted, untraceable, potentially environmental um, pollution coffee. So the economics of pod coffee do not make sense at all. So price is not an issue for choosing pod coffee. The only reason you would ever choose pod coffee is absolute convenience. If you just want to push a button and get something that resembles a cup of joe out of that machine, um, then I can't argue with you there. But if you want a fresh tasting, ethically sourced, environmentally sustainable cup of coffee, um, you cannot compete with uh, a small coffee roaster such as myself or there's other ones around. And when you take Ojo coffee at $18 a pound, that works out that you're spending about 71 cents per cup. 
71 percent cents per cup for you know when it's been roasted you know the family farms where it came from um, you know that the packaging is compostable and you're getting really good fresh tasting coffee in your house. An alternative to pod coffee, a lot of people say, well, I can't beat the convenience and you are kind of right, but there's a couple of reasons why I wouldn't drink pod coffee. Most of the machine, and I'm not, and if, if, you, if, you're, if you're happy with what your pod machine is producing, then great, stick with it. I'm not gonna tell you to change, but if you want to enhance it, the big problem with pod coffee machines is they don't get to the ideal temperature of about 200 degrees Fahrenheit for proper extraction of coffee. So a lot of people tend to buy darker roasts for these capsules because it's the only way they can get any perceived flavor. And, I, and I, I recommend that if you are still using pod coffee but you can refill your own baskets, yes, use a darker roast because it will uh, dissolve the solids a lot easier because when you go to a, a dark roast coffee, the cellular structure is just more porous and allows the uh, water to come through a lot easier. Um, but if I had my choice between pod coffee and a French press, I would choose a French press any day. Dump your grinds in, pour your hot water, let it steep for four minutes and you're gonna have a coffee that's about 20 times better than anything that comes out of a pot.